Well, good Thursday morning, everybody. It is October the 10th, and I'm Chris Allen here on the SAM channel. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. Uh, wow. Hurricane Milton, pretty incredible storm. Uh, it did make landfall last night about 7.30 Central Time uh, on the... Uh, west coast of Florida, as you know. Uh, and uh, it was a Category 3 as it landed, or the eye wall made its uh, appearance. And, of course, this morning, waking up to see the destruction and the result of that. Uh, and uh, it's pretty significant as far as uh, the amount of water. We They didn't get the uh, awfully high uh, storm surges that were predicted. Some were predicted to be 15 to 20 feet. In some cases that did not occur, especially in the Tampa Bay area, which was a huge concern. Uh, but, uh, there's still a lot of wind, still a lot of rain going on. I'll put the, there's the remnant low pressure in motion. It's going to gain uh, it's going to lose strength as it gains momentum and moves out into the Atlantic. Uh, taking a look at uh, a couple of places like Cedar Key, uh, we're seeing, you know, some cloudy skies, but the rain for the most part has stopped. You go down to I-75 and traffic is flowing. Things are looking a little bit better. Um, there is... Masaryk Town, I believe that's what that's called. Uh, pretty quiet there as most people are gone. Let's check another interstate. Let's see. I'm going to go to this one, uh, State Route 570. Now we're getting closer to the Orlando area. Still rainy and windy at times. There's I-4 uh, that cuts through the center part of Florida. So there are are some improving or there is improving going on in those areas. Uh, but the destruction is pretty serious. And, uh, you'll, of course, when you watch some of the networks, you'll see that it is a serious time and lots of flooding, lots of problems. Uh, there's about 3 million without power now in the state of Florida. And even last night when I was on television uh, doing the TV update on, on Milton, you could see the power outages and they were starting to go north and then connecting with the power outages left over from Helene. That's, I know it's pretty incredible. So you get, you get the uh, storm outages from Milton connecting with the storm, the people that are still without power in the Carolinas from Hurricane Helene. It, it's mind-boggling. So when you add it all up, we're talking about probably 4 million, maybe close to 5, that are, that are without power. And who knows when, you know, some of the Carolinas are going to get their infrastructure back, their electricity, their water uh, systems, uh, the, um, roadways, uh, it, it's just, it's mind boggling. It really is. Uh, you see, uh, right there, that's Jim Cantori, uh, who's on the weather channel. Of course, he's been right there in the thick of it. I got a, uh, text message. Um, well, I sent, I sent Jim a text message last night because he was in the middle of all of this. And I will show you just to, just to show, um, of course it's not going to show his number, but, but there, there is, you know, it's Jim, uh, here we go. Yeah. He says, <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I would like to, I was telling him, I said, I'd like to write out one of these in my lifetime just to experience it. And he said, uh, it's an ass kicker coming. And I, I said, I believe it. And then he was live on the air doing an update on the weather channel and the power went out where he was and it did this boom, 
boom sound. And I knew that sound. He said, he looked around, he goes, guys, what is that? What's that sound? And so I wrote him and said, uh, that noise is transformers arcing. And then he wrote, as you see there, that was incredible. And, uh, so yes, I have Jim Ken Corey's number. Not, not that big of a deal. I mean, he and I have known each other for years and years. And of course he was here, uh, back a few months ago, but you know, and I told him I was praying for his safety and the rest of the crew that was out there. And you know, that, that happens when you get somebody you appreciate and you look up to and you, you have a friendship with, you want them to be okay, especially uh, when they're out there covering this type of weather. Uh, so he is okay this morning. And as you see there, he's, uh, he's covering it. He's right there. I don't know if he's had any sleep or not, but, uh, anyway, back here at home here at eight o'clock in the morning, sunshine, nothing changes with our weather. It is not going to change at all over the next few days. It's going to stay this nice, but we do see one change and that's going to be in temperature, which I'll talk about in just a moment. All right, right now, let's take a look at radar. And of course, there's nothing to show you on radar, but if you look to the east, notice these countries. Yep, that West Virginia. Then freeze warnings, I think, or freeze watch in other parts of West Virginia, uh, on down toward. Uh, Southern Virginia frost advisories. Uh, there's a freeze warning snowshoe, West Virginia. Well, yeah, they're going to get down into the thirties. And I think our time or our turn is coming next week. I think by either Monday night or Tuesday night, we're going to have our turn with the first frost of the season. I really really think that's going to happen. It is going to be, of course, the first frost of this fall season of 2024, uh, but it's coming. Uh, this morning, we're feeling a little bit of that chill in the air again. Here's a look at Kentucky Mesonet temperatures from all the sensors across the Commonwealth uh, here just after 8 a.m. Central Time. You see some low 40s out to the north and east up there around Ashland, and then you see upper 40s to low 50s, closer you get to Bowling Green and Southern Kentucky. And so it's a very comfortable morning. Uh, moisture, eh, there's none, hardly none in the air. Very little upper 40s, low 50 degree dew points, which means it feels wonderful. Winds, calm, pretty much across all of Southern Kentucky. And like I said, there's, there's just not going to be any change to our weather. Uh, we're going to start to get probably a little abnormally dry if we continue, uh, to go without rain. But as I've mentioned before, we're not going to see any effects at all, at all from Milton. Milton is already going out into the Atlantic East far away from us. So we won't get any clouds, we won't get any wind, and we certainly won't get any rain from Milton like we did with Helene. That went a different direction, and it came our direction, and unfortunately uh, wreaked havoc through the Carolinas. Well, let's see what is coming. This is the model blender, and as you can see, the next few days will be uh, about where we should be, mid to upper 70s, maybe low 80s. Then we have a cold front that is going to come through Sunday night, but all it will do is change our wind direction and usher in some cooler, chillier air even. I'll use the word chilly for this one for the first time this season. Look at those high temperatures next week. Low to mid 60s for high temperatures and then 30s and 40s for low temperatures. And there you see, maybe Tuesday night, 
is when we get close to freezing. And I do think some of you will get close to freezing or hit it. And that means you're going to see your first frost of the season. It's just, it's going to happen. It appears. Then we do warm up a little bit into the low to mid seventies after that, as we get into next weekend, but, um, it's not going to be all that warm. I can tell you, it's going to feel like fall is supposed to feel. I can tell you that for sure. As we head into next week, taking a look at, um, the surface map here, we'll see that high pressure is just going to sit over our area and just continue to give us the nice weather that we're experiencing and have experienced all week. Here's uh, midnight tonight, Friday morning, afternoon and evening, Saturday, Sunday. There, Here comes the dry front. All it's going to do is usher in the cooler, drier air. Monday, the front is past us, and now we're basking in those 60s during the day and 30s and near 40 at night. There's Tuesday, there's Wednesday, there's, it, it, see, no rain for a pretty much a whole nother week. Now, now it's going to get abnormally dry again, unless, unless we get another tropical system of some kind that wants to work in here and uh, bring us some rain. But right now don't, I don't really see much of anything occurring in that uh, regard. All right, you guys have a great Thursday. Thank you as always for watching. You can listen to me right now on the radio. It's Sam 100.7 and you can catch me later on your TV tonight. News 40 at five, six and 10. God bless.